So Sora, the open AI thing that does the video simulation thing, or like, you know, you type something into Sora and it creates a video based on what you said, you know, a woman walking down to Tokyo downtown was one of the videos that were showing, right? For it to learn how to do that, for it to be able to do that, it needs to have a, uh, a, a sort of a copy of real world physics uh, in a way by ingesting, I'm guessing, video of real world physics. And then it can generate a model that says, okay, this is if a object that was shaped like a human were to move its lower limbs in this manner, then this is the type of movement I would expect to result from the upper body. And if they swing their arms, this is, you know, what I would expect to happen and the way the light reflects off of the buildings on the, on the ground with the water. So it's basically, so it's, it's a simulation of reality. It needs to, it needs to create a simulation of reality for it to create accurate looking videos of reality. Yep, exactly. And it has to, you know, it's doing that by creating a neural net that kind of simulates that. And in what they're doing, like our, our neural net that simulates that is the quality test because if it generates video and it passes what a human would say, yes, that is real or no, that is not real. Then it has the, the quality of the simulation that has been generated is at or above the quality of the simulation that human brains would generate. It's a mind fuck dude. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Okay, so then, so then you mentioned something about so meet space GPT. For those that are not familiar, uh, Hans coined this term with, that basically describes a like a chat GPT alternative to reality, which is what this simulation of the real world would be. Would be a meet space GPT. So Sora is literally a meet space GPT in a way, like the early innings of it. Um, and then, so you were talking briefly about what Tesla is doing with with uh, its AI system. So in theory, what AI, what Tesla, and an, an analogy of how a different company might be approaching this potentially is that with Tesla gathering a bunch of video f data through its cars, it is also capturing a subset, let's say, of reality, uh, of, of the real world physics, you know, how cars break, how cars accelerate, how humans go into, um, you know, uh, into, um, uh, intersections, how they how they move around the walkways, how objects fall off of a pickup truck, how rain comes down, um, how the the sun creates different shadows on the ground, right? So all these things are physics based uh, results of our reality that are projected onto the camera system, which the video captures, and then Tesla uses that data to. Uh, teach the car how to navigate through those areas. But by default, they're also building a, a meet space GPT <laughs> because they have a subset of reality. It's just that subset is on the roads, whereas Sora, the subset would be whatever uh, video you give it. Is that a fair? Okay, got it. Um, so that's that's wild to think about because I thought the way Sora worked was like I didn't make the connection of the physics stuff because I thought it was just you put a, a video in the in the system or, or a bunch of video in the system and it's like oh this is how a human walks and then it's just like okay this is how a human walks but for it to be able to uh, account for every permutation of, of a human walking in different scenarios it needs to create a model for what reality for 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 um the place where the human would actually make those movements. And so that when the movements are made is not like some wacky thing. Like I saw one of the videos with like the woman moving their hands. I know MKBHD did like a little threat and I saw the video of like, like the hands look, what the hell are they doing kind of thing? That's more like, that's more like ensuring that you get like, you know, the wrist movements down and how humans typically move, move their hands and stuff. Uh, maybe that's different, but. Well, it's the same. So yeah, it's, I would say that in that scenario, the model is not good yet, but it will get like, they have a lot of the fundamentals and the foundations. And the trick that I think that is um, really, it popped for me that OpenAI is doing that is, also has a direct correlation to the development of FSD is 
the the camera position and field of view being able to manipulate that in space is what forces these models to have to generate a very robust three-dimensional understanding because if you have to look at the same scene from this perspective over here and this perspective over here and this perspective over here and for all of those perspectives to actually look like it is the same fundamental thing that you're looking at just from you know from a different angle then that's where you're you're transcending from two dimensions into three dimensions and now you have to have not just three dimensions but three dimensions that are consistent across the different views and so the ability to manipulate the camera angle in sora is a big part of you know creating and i think even sam altman said that what they have created with sora is essentially a physics simulation engine or there's a component of that that's involved in what it is that they've created and one of the things that they don't have in sora is you know the ability for whatever that thing is to then interact with the world directly like it is pulling in video data that is collected by a passive observer camera and you know the thing that's interesting about full self-driving is that it's a system that obviously has the ability to observe the world but it is also moving through the world and affecting the world as it acts and so it is an agent that is acting in the world and observing the interactions you know as it goes which is definitely a whole nother level um but i think all of it is just really realizing there's a lot of human th like the way that our minds work that we take for granted that's very complex that for the first time in history like computation has been able to do a lot of things but then there's been a lot of things that it just couldn't do and physics so i, I would say one of the first things that tipped me off in this direction was um reading the deep mind paper recently on uh graphcast where they deep mind has created a neural network that can simulate weather as good and actually better than the best previous systems that we had so there are like <clears throat> there's a couple of ways to simulate physics and they're all difficult and the we have basically there are only three weather simulators that use traditional computers in the world and so to create a, a simulation of like hardcore math that's all going to be either calculus or you know differential equations or um even discrete numerical net methods which is what these end up being basically all that to say there's a bunch of mathematicians who had to come up with a bunch of exact formulas and then they have to figure out how to mesh all these exact formulas together to simulate how something's going like how the weather something as complex as the weather that has so many variables is going to change over time and it's just not like there's too many variables it's hard to do that and because the system is so big and there's so many variables it takes forever like it would take a day for that whole simulation to run and DeepMind created a neural network that could do essentially the same job and it could run in a fraction of the time on a fraction of the overall amount of compute and produce a result that was a little bit worse in the short term but you could forecast in like 10 minute chunks and you could run a series of those and once you get out a certain distance i can't remember if it was 30 minutes or an hour or whatever then the quality of the forecast is actually better using graphcast than it is using the traditional methods so the traditional methods are better for like i know exactly what's going to happen next but then because it takes so long to generate that result and it's so many computers and so much time then it you can't run that fast enough to be able to maintain that accuracy from now over the next 
you know, 24 hours. Um, and so, and then you can't, you really can't go far into the future. Like the, that's the one thing that the graph cast was able to do is it was able to go farther into the future. And so that was like the first inkling to me that neural networks are going to take over more and more and more physics based simulation work. And we're going to get better results from them and they're going to get faster and cheaper and easier and, and be able to apply in more areas. And so now like that same thing is we're seeing it come into video and just further, like further augment neural nets ability to understand physics or for us to use those neural nets to generate like a, a useful work out of an understanding of how a physics interaction is going to transpire. Which is interesting to think about because, you know, a neural network is is analogous to a human brain. And so <laughs> like the thing that is best at figuring out what reality is going to do is using a thing that closely resembles a human brain. Right. Is that is that way is that way too stupid to think about or I feel like No, I mean it to me it makes you know, it makes sense. Like the way that we have figured out how to do this is not very energy efficient and it's not very time efficient. And one of the things that biology has optimized for is energy efficiency and being able to make, yeah, a, a very snap judgment when necessary um, that is very highly accurate. Like all things considered, you know, your mind's ability to react to a perceived danger before you even know what it is that you are reacting to is bananas insane. And the way that biology has solved this issue is all with neural nets and multimodal sensor input. So you can hear, you can see, you can smell, and then you can, you know, feel um, the combination of all those things. And honestly, like you can even taste something that's in the air like so all five of your senses can all receive valid and independent sensory input about the environment around you and literally any one of those five senses can alert you to danger and prime you for action like in fractions of a second and all of that operates on neural net hardware so everything everything you just said and like it makes so much sense uh, to think about when it comes to why this technology is so groundbreaking. You know, it's just it still feels very early, early innings. And I think maybe the results of the early innings is not giving a lot of people uh, maybe the, the confidence that this is what's coming. But to me, it really seems like these kinds of uh, developments in the arena is really leading to a very obvious outcome, which is I don't think this technology is a bubble. I don't think it's one of those things where um, <laughs> uh, that, that it's not going to play out the way it, people think it's going to play out. I think it's coming. And, and I think many people have said this too, right? This, this is not just me saying, it. I'm, I'm just saying basically what, what other people have said that are really close to the space. But I think there's more and more proof that that is saying that not only is this going to be completely transformational for society, like absolutely completely world shatteringly crazy, but it's also coming way faster than a lot of people thought, because you know the 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 one again the video that MKBHD put up yesterday of that Will Smith eating spaghetti meme using AI, and then a year later we have a near photorealistic video that was generated from a prompt. Right, we're already there in a year's time, and then you layer on top of that, you know, the work we've been doing with Eleven Labs and the voice the voice uh, AI model which a lot of people on this channel love you guys so much, but boy, have you guys been failing the reverse Turing test. <laughs> this is AI. No, it's not. This is not AI. Yes, it is. <laughs> so that's proof, right? So that's like a subset of the technology that's already working. Then we have the video one that's starting to, to become a thing, right? Then we know that the video one, the bones of the video one that's working is also a simulator for reality. And you think about, okay, what are the other things that are going to come out of that? 
uh, you know, having a simulation of reality. And then you think about, okay, which companies are best equipped to develop those kinds of technologies. And the fact that when one company reaches that level, another company seems to reach that level within six months or like even three months. Like, so OpenAI's got this Sora thing. And then in three, six months time, what's Bard going to have, you know, what is some, what's mid journey going to have or whatever, whatever these other companies are. And it feels like uh, achieving the technological threshold of being able to generate that type of content, it seems like that piece of it is extremely repeatable and it doesn't seem like it's a moat. It's the data that you have access to when, when you layer that underneath the model that you've built and the data that feeds it is really the separation between these companies.